What we're doing here in Gainesville at this forest is we are putting on an animal crime scene workshop. We have about 35 attendees from all over the world from different disciplines of law enforcement, um, investigators, emergency responders, and veterinarians. The scenes are set up based on basic scenarios that investigators are likely to find. You know, there's categories of trauma that we like to teach um, the recognition of, such as a sharp force injury with a stabbing, uh, a gunshot wound, a blunt force trauma with an animal being hit with an object. So these are common things that are found in field investigations. So we try to recreate those types of scenes here. And uh, the trauma to the animal is, is, is recreated on the skeletons that we have here. What they're doing is excavating in an archaeological way. Uh, so using the principles of archaeology, they're using the same tools of, of, in the same methods that we would do when we're excavating on the human side. So they're using um, trowels to take off uh, a few inches of dirt at a time, and they're also using brushes around the more um, fragile items of evidence, like the bones or anything that might fall apart when they touched it. What we're usually dealing with is remains that have been dumped somewhere and decomposing, or they've been buried. So that, that is what affects most of our cases. How do we discover that evidence, and how do we process that evidence properly? So that's why it's important. There's rarely a case where we have um, fresh discovery of an animal. And it becomes very frustrating. This happens a lot with our blood sports cases, with uh, dog fighting, uh, cock fighting, uh, puppy mills, and hoarders. And you, yeah, and you can use, um, some people have used cardboard. It depends on how big it is. You've got a big dog. That's why I was talking about using tarps or um, uh, flexible plastic. And uh, this is first for me. We, we have a, a certification back in Massachusetts that we do where uh, it's 10 weeks and we go through cruelty investigations, but never uh, we never learn about uh, removing a body that's been buried. And this is a, a, a good training for me because uh, we have had situations like that. With animal cruelty, there's usually no witness or reluctant witnesses. And certainly the victims cannot testify even if they're alive when we're dealing with animals. So they are always evidence-based cases.